Good morning. We welcome you to Trinity on this beautiful day, on this Memorial Day weekend. Some of you might have a few questions about our display out here in the narthex. When an organization of troops heads into combat, when they come back, their first assembly, they remember their fallen comrades by the boots, the helmet, the gun. They will have one of those for everyone who has fallen during that time of battle. Um, we have one of those in the back of church today because we want to honor all of those people who did not come home. Because Memorial Day is just about that, to honor the people who paid the ultimate sacrifice so that we could be here in this place of worship today. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. We have many heroes all around us. And sometimes we just need to be made aware of who they are and what they have made, what, what sacrifice they have made. Because if we can understand the sacrifice that they have made for us, then we can honor them and appreciate what they have done for us. So what we're going to be looking at today is in our service, that little theme, Thank God for Heroes. May God truly bless our worship today. Also a reminder that we do have an offering, a free will offering to support our Lutheran military support group. Uh, the money that you give to us, we will be sending to other people, uh, basically because uh, all the people helping vets today need finances. Uh, whatever money you give probably isn't going to be staying here at Trinity very long. We plan on giving it away to all those organizations helping veterans. Thank you. May God truly bless us today.
Please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his, his dear children, but we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all of your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. In the peace of that forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Oh, taste that. Let us pray. O oh Lord, throughout history, we have been assaulted by evil. Each time when it seemed like evil would triumph, you sent us people empowered by your love, motivated by the love for others, and equipped with your word. Help us to appreciate their sacrifice for us and the victory you won for them. But above all, help us to realize that you still control all things. And the final victory has already been won by the greatest hero of all, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please be seated. Our first lesson is recorded in 1 Samuel chapter 17, beginning at verse 45. We all know this Sunday school story just so very well. But it's amazing that all of the people were afraid. They didn't know what to do because the giant was ready to assault them. God sent a child, probably 12 years old, to stand up against this giant and defeat him, one of the heroes of the Bible. David said to the Philistine, you have come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will hand you over to me, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. Today I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel." All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. As the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone stank, sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. Here ends our first lesson. Let us now sing together Psalm 66. It is found on page 90 in the front part of your hymnal.
Our second lesson is taken from the first part of Hebrews chapter 11. Our sermon this morning will be taken from the last part of this chapter. One of the great chapters of the Bible, because here God lists the heroes of faith. But what's really amazing is that if you look throughout the entire Bible, God raised up common people, common people who did wonderful things by his grace under his power. This world needs more heroes. But here in Hebrews chapter 11, God lists just a few of them. Now, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, he still speaks, even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith... It is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, Abraham, even though he was past the past age, and Sarah herself was barren, was enabled to become a father because he considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Here ends our second lesson. Out of respect for the gospel, please stand. Our holy gospel is recorded in Luke chapter 7, beginning at verse 1. Here is a wonderful hero of faith. He's commended by Jesus Christ for one thing, humility. Humility that allowed God to work for him, through him. This is what it makes us all heroes of faith. When Jesus had finished saying all of this in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. There a centurion's servant whom his master valued highly was sick and about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus and sent some elders of the Jews to ask him, are asking him to come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him, this man deserves to, you ha- to, have, to, deserves to have you do this because he loves our nation and has built our synagogue. 
So Jesus went with them. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent friends to, to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. This is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, come, and he comes. And I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him. And turned to the crowd following him, he said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. Then the men who had been sent returned to the house and found the servant well. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. What is a hero? I always like this question. Because if you ask our kids, it's going to be something like a Superman or a Batman or the Avengers and all of the storybook heroes... But I'm sorry, but these are not real heroes. 
The real heroes are the ones who walk into a place, hear the sounds of battle, terrified, scared, yet they do their job. These are the people who have said to evil, you can come no further or you must get through me. And they stand and fight. Some of them die. These are the heroes. On Memorial Day, we honor those people because you see what they want everyone to see are those white crosses at Arlington National Cemetery. Acres and acres and acres of them. Similar crosses are held all over the place at veterans' memorials. Because you see, there's the heroes. They stood. They fought. They died. And you see, my friends, God wants us to honor them. Because you see, many of the people that you see underneath those crosses were, were normal people like you and me. Men and women who had husbands or wives, children. They're real people. And they gave the ultimate sacrifice so that we could have our freedom today. They are the ones who, when they see danger and hear of danger, do not run away, they run toward it. And this is why we have to expand this idea of a hero to include all of them, but even more people. Think of the police officers who work to keep us safe. Think of the firemen who hear a child crying in a fire and run into the fire, and sometimes they don't come back. These are the heroes that we need to honor continuously because without their sacrifice, we could have nothing that we have today. And then there are heroes we call spiritual heroes who stand up under the power of God and say no to evil, even at the cost of their lives. The latest figure from the Vatican says that there are 100,000 Christian martyrs every year. The latest ones that are etched in our memory are these teenagers over in the Middle East that the ISIS paraded in front of a camera. They had them kneel down and people, people of ISIS said, deny Jesus Christ or we'll cut your head off. And while they're doing this, the teenager's family is right there. And these teens decided to say, no, I will not deny Jesus Christ. And in graphic detail, as, until it was taken off the internet, you could watch as their heads were cut off. These are the spiritual heroes that, again, stand up for evil, stand against it, I should say, and will not be moved no matter what the threats are. And then, of course, we have our greatest hero of all. His name is Jesus Christ. Because you see, it's really amazing when you think about it that from eternity, when they decided to create the world, he and the Father, that he knew that the human race would fall, that evil would destroy them, and that they would not have any power to defeat evil, that they were going to succumb to it. And the only way for evil to be defeated was for God himself to enter our world and defeat it. Jesus knew that the only way for his human race to be in heaven was for him to go battle evil and defeat sin, death, and Satan. And it cost him his own life. When you understand what he has done, he truly is the greatest hero of all because he sacrificed everything 
for our benefit. This is why the words of our text today are so important, because here in this 11th chapter of Hebrews, God speaks about the people who stood, who stood and died. And God calls them heroes, and so must we. Because throughout the entire history of the human race, there have been heroes sent by God to stand up against evil and say no. And now these are the people that are all around us today, and, and we want to acknowledge what they have done and to acknowledge what God wants us to do. And then to say that simple little prayer, thank God for heroes. Because you see, they are motivated by love for God, for themselves, for their families. But unfortunately, they can only be rewarded by God himself in heaven. If you ever want to see something fascinating... Just simply pick up your Bible. Start paging through it. And all of a sudden, God is going to give you names. Names of sinful human beings. Names that were, we look at them and say, how in the world could they be a hero? Some of them were more sinful than we could ever imagine. Some of them were so weak that we cannot even comprehend why God would call them a hero. We look at them and say, how could they ever be a hero? <laughs> well, in themselves, they could not be. But by the power of God, they could. In every case, God was the one who then had them rise up. He used them. They stood against evil, and God gave them the power. God gave them the love. God gave them everything they needed, and through him, by him, because of him, evil was defeated. I mean, think about this for a moment. The 12 disciples, common fishermen, common everyday people, And if, they, if you would have said that they were going to stand up and defeat evil, they would have said, no way. They were sinners. Yet after seeing all the events of Jesus' life, tradition says that only one of them died a natural death. The rest were martyred for their faith. And then if you follow human history, you, you see the same thing that all of a sudden the world is being un conquered by evil and it looks like all is lost, all is going to be lost and some person stands up and says no. And then God uses that person to say, evil, you can only come this far. And by the grace of God, it is defeated over and over and over and over and over again until finally the end of the world will take place and God will then end this sinful world. But my friends, what's really amazing about this is the fact that God says, I need more heroes. I mean, look at our world today. You know, the news media condemns Christianity. Science has told us that the Bible is no longer valid. Come on. You believe that Jesus Christ is the only Savior? And we can go on and on and on of people willing to attack Christianity, attack us for our faith, attack us for our beliefs. Now, what are we going to do about it? Many churches have done what the world wants them to do, and they back away, and they go, oh, don't hurt me, people of the world. I'll compromise, and I'll give in, and, and, and it's okay, and don't hurt me anymore. But God says, I need people that are going to step forward and say, sorry, 
I will follow my God, period. And I don't care what you say, what you think, what you do to me. Even if it costs me my life, I will say God is the only way and his word is still true to this day. Because you see, my friends, everybody says we need to change the world. And you're right, we do. How is God going to change this world? Is he going to raise up an army and we'll go and kill all the unbelievers? God doesn't work that way. Is he going to give us all guns and tell us to go up and threaten people? Or does he want us to make more rules and regulations and and force people to behave and, and more laws so that everybody cringes under the power of God? Sorry. God doesn't work that way. But you know what he says to us as Christians? Go and make disciples of all nations by baptizing them, by teaching them. And oh, by the way, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation. God says, I'm going to give to my people this power of my love. This love that I'm going to share and show to all people will change them from the inside out. The power of the gospel is such a force that Satan must run away from it because he cannot stand up to it. And now he's the one who says to the Christians of all time, it's time for you to get involved. It's time for you to say, I need to help the world. And the way I'm going to do it is the way that Jesus did it, by loving them to death. And now God says to you, sitting here today, go and make disciples. Tell the gospel to your family and friends, your co-workers. And now we're going to find out how many heroes we have because you see what's going to happen is Satan is going to get inside of you and say, I don't know if I can do this. And you're right, you can't but God can through you. He says, I don't want you to take my word, I don't want you to take your words or your power, I want you to take my power, my love, my word, and spread it. And that's why, my friends, when you look at our text for today, it truly is amazing the common people that God used to accomplish his will. Because there was nothing within them that said they're very good people. What made them powerful was God living in them and God living through them. Here's what God says. And what more shall I say? I do not not have time to tell about Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions and quenched the fury of the flames and escaped the edges of of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who, over, who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured and refused to be released so that they might gain a better resurrection. Some faced jeers and floggings while still others were chained and put in prison. They were stoned. They were sawed in two. They were put to death by the sword. They went about in sheepskins, goatskins, destitute, persecuted, mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. They were commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. 
because God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. All of these people had something in common. They were motivated by their love for God, period. That's it. And that's what made them heroes. And that's why they were commended. Because they took this love from God and put it into practice. They put it into action. Through them, God changed the world. But what's really amazing is that God had promised them all sorts of things, and they did not receive any of it because many of them died here. But that promise was not for something in this world. The promise was for what is up there in heaven. And all of them, by faith, received what was promised because then and only then were they finally rewarded by God. This is why, my friends, today, God needs more heroes. God needs you. And when we use his power, (laughs) we cannot be defeated. I'd like you to take a moment for a while and just think. See this magnificent place called Trinity? Wow. How many people died so that we could worship here today? How many people died so that we would have religious freedom and we could worship God however we wanted? Those are the people we need to honor today. Because of their sacrifice, We are here today. At the very same time, I want you to answer another question. We are a church that still teaches the truth of God's word. The Bible is held up so highly in our churches that it's a source of every doctrine that we teach. How many people had to die so that we could teach the truth today. How many people made that ultimate sacrifice that no matter what was going to take place, they were going to teach the truth and they would not compromise? And we've received the benefit of what they did. Today we want to honor them too. Because you see, we could not be here without the sacrifice of human beings who stood up against evil and said no. And then when you start to think about that, thank Jesus Christ. Because you see, without his sacrifice on the cross of Calvary, none of us would be here at all. So we are here to worship today by the grace of God. What a wonderful thing it is. But you want to know something? I think we take it for granted too often. Because you see, we are here to worship because of the sacrifice of many. So what I want you to do is about the next 30 seconds or so, I want you to think about all the people that made the sacrifice so that we could be here today. And then I want you to say that little prayer. Thank God for these heroes.
Please stand. Let us now confess this Christian faith using the words and the music of hymn number 270. Please be seated. Please rise. 
Join with me in the responsive prayer on page seven of your bulletin. Almighty God, we acknowledge with thanks that all we have and enjoy is a gift from your gracious hand. We come before you today in heartfelt appreciation for our nation and its people. We thank you for enabling us to worship you in freedom and to serve you without fear. You have enriched us with the bounties of farm and factory, the beauty of forest and mountains, and the marvels of medicine and science. For all these blessings, we praise and glorify you. Look with favor upon our nation and preserve our cherished liberties. Enable our leaders to govern with wisdom, honesty, courage, and justice. Protect those who serve in the armed forces and those who maintain peace and safety in our communities. Give us willingness to obey our nation's laws and to work for the common good. Keep our financial institutions secure and our economy strong. Bless our fields that they may produce abundant harvests. Guard us from calamities of nature and accident and spare our land from the ravages of disease and epidemic. Teach us not to worry, but to cast all our cares on you. Strengthen the homes of our nation. By your spirit, lead husbands and wives to love each other, parents to nurture their children, young adults to assume responsibility, and children to show respect. Oh, Lord God, Heavenly Father, on this Memorial Day weekend, there are many heroes that we need to honor, those who have died so that we could have our liberties, those who have died so that we can have our precious word, and above all, Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for your sacrifice so that we could even be here to worship you. We recognize that we live in a sinful world and there are so many things that want to attack us. But, oh Lord, we thank you that you have defended us now have you, as you have throughout history. Help us to realize that we can live in confidence under your care both now and forever. Because through your power and by your love, you will keep us strong and then help us to reach out with that precious gospel so that every person in this world will know you as their Savior and be with us together as we celebrate your love forever in heaven, which is the final reward of all of your heroes. To give to us your strength and your peace and your hope, and let us share your love with everyone. To you, O oh Lord, we bring our thanks and our requests. Hear our prayers for Jesus' sake. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. O Lord God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation. And bestow on us your saving peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Receive with believing hearts the blessing of our God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.